بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان یو مسٹ ہیو بین لٹل بٹ ایموشنلی سویڈ ٹو آر لاسٹ سیشن آن وائس لیسنس اینڈ اٹس امپلیکیشنس اینڈ اٹس کانسیکوینسز وی آر موونگ فارورڈ ود آر ود آر چیپٹر آن ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ آن چیلنجز آف ایتھیکل لیونگ اینڈ بہیوریل ایتھکس کپلڈ اینڈ ڈف ٹیلڈ ود ٹیکنیکس آف اینٹی کرپشن اینڈ اکاؤنٹیبلٹی ناؤ لیڈیز اینڈ جنمن Today we are going to talk about corporate governance and business ethics. We are going to try to bridge both together and see how they are intertwined to create better institutions and a better work environment. Now, when we look at this, then what we see, ladies and gentlemen, is that according to business professionals in Pakistan, hundreds and thousands of deals go unreported in Pakistan on a daily basis. Due to highly politicized and bureaucratic business environment, almost Every company has played foul on certain occasions. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge dilemma. I have about 30 years of experience of working in the social sector, in the private sector, and in the corporate sector. I have worked inside the government and outside the government. I have worked in more than 16 countries around the world. But in Pakistan, we have a major problem. And that problem is of hypocrisy, of double standards, and of multiplicity. This is something that we have to shed away with. We have to do away with our hypocrisy, our double standards, and our multiplicity approach. Ladies and gentlemen, in Pakistan, when big business houses and their CEOs or their chairman or their founders come on national TV and bloat, and basically indulge in self-praise that they do corruption and they do big business. Where are we heading? When big businessmen say that they have to put wheels on files and on contracts, what are we inspiring our future generations with? When people are given respect based upon their superficiality on how they appear, on what car they are, or on which SUV they are traveling, how many guards do they have, how well-dressed are their guards, forget about how well-dressed they are, what type of brands are they wearing, what type of glass castles they are willing, living in. Then what type of society are we developing, ladies and gentlemen? Why do we glamorize superficiality so much? Success at any cost. The question is why? Why do we compromise on principles and values? So what we see is, is that big business does not flourish unless it is involved in foul play. And that is deplorable, ladies and gentlemen. That is not the norm around the world. There can be a fair level field. There can be a fair playing field. There can be an equitable playing field. There can be competition, but not cutthroat competition. There can be opportunities for everyone and possibilities for everyone. We do not have to indulge in negative practices, in corruption, in bribery, in superficiality, in window dressing. and getting business at any cost. We have to understand its negative implications for the future, be it the organization or it be the nation. That is extremely important. And we have to ensure that this highly bureaucratic business environment, which has then been supplemented by being politicized, has to end. The bureaucracy feel that They are the expert or the king of everything. No, it's not like that. Everyone has their own niche. Everyone has their own strengths. Everyone has their own expertise. Right man for the right job with the right attitude. Focusing on knowledge, skills, competencies, abilities. Understanding. That knowledge is power. 
that is extremely important and glamorizing experience promoting out of the box solutions encouraging continuous improvement these are the important aspects of society as a whole hurdles are in the ways of ethical standards we see growing corruption we have a 70 year corruption framework in pakistan with the public with the national public accounts committee at the top we have the national accountability bureau we have the federal investigation agency we have different provincial anti corruption establishments we have inter and intra accountability mechanisms and organizations working we have the state bank we have nadra we have we have other institutions like fbr all of them working in tantrum trying to bring about accountability but unfortunately at the end of the day we see more corruption taking place why is that taking place there is increasing disparity between people the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer the middle class is being diluted so on one end of the pendulum we see so much of affluence that is not found in the richest countries of the world and on the other hand we see so much of poverty and deprivation which is not found in the poorest countries of the world it is important to bridge the gap and it is important to ensure that corporations and institutions and society and government work hand in hand for a better society for a better nation there is rising inflation right now look at where the dollar has gone 170 look at where the british pound has gone 235 look at how the prices of gold skyrocketed the prices of petrol the prices of daily needs onions spices rice flour vegetables fruit is a luxury oil salts pepper masalas milk butter pick up anything bread pick up anything and prices are skyrocketing what will the poor do how will they survive people are losing jobs why aren't we creating them because a select eat a select elite are working like vultures and they are eating into the very fabric and very existence of the nation this has to stop they will run away with all of their riches and leave the majority in the darkness of a future that cannot be allowed we have to move forward with good values and good governance and corporate governance to ensure the betterment of society as a whole we see in all of this shrinking profit some organizations just skyrocketing while others barely surviving these things have to change a survey in which three factors were identified by business managers as obstacles of ethical behavior one company policies two unethical industrial climate and three like we talked about rampant corruption in the government focus on the world rampant why is it that countries like singapore like new zealand like denmark like norway like sweden why are they flourishing why don't they have corruption and then you can see their quality of life is just wonderful and beautiful for all of their people we can also do it we just have to change the way we think the way we perceive and the way we act the way we behave and we can make an oasis we can make a heaven we have all the ingredients and all the elements just putting them together in the right way and eliminating 
this riffraff. Thinking more long term than short term. There is immense potential. There is immense caliber. There is infinite capability. Just getting things right. And we can change the destiny of the current generation and also of our future generation. It is important that the board of directors need to form clear policies to combat unethical practices in the government and in the institution. Wherever there is ambiguity, people tend to take advantage. Just look at this aspect. There are about 149 labor laws in Pakistan. The complete labor code is this thick, nearly 3,600 pages. Who's going to read 149 laws? Who's going to read 3,600 pages? Who's going to then understand them? And then who is going to make them implementable? Why have we made things so complex and complicated? We should simplify laws so that they can be practiced, so that there are no overlaps, so that there is lesser ambiguity and more clarity. That will lead to good governance and corporate governance. Big business take firm stands, have the power to fight against the unethical behavior of the government. Yes, it can happen. If people start collaborating and getting together and wanting to bring about a positive change. And therefore, there is a great need to inculcate our future generations through awareness and education, just like the global education integrity program of UNODC, which is bringing about this change through teachers, students, youth leaders, and then creating umbrella of integrity and accountability. Thank you so much.